This video is sponsored by Trugo Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today. April 15th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, our sun has produced five Earth-facing M-class solar flares already today. Now, we started off the day around 1.15 UTC time with a 1.7 M-flare right here. That was followed up by this M1 flare at about 7.15 UTC time. And that was followed directly up by what looks like about a 2.35. We'll see that at Space Weather Live in just a second. Followed by another M1.21. Followed by a larger M2.2 flare, a little bit longer period of time. So I'll show you what I mean by them not categorizing the last three flares yet. There's only been two sunspots that have contributed to all this flaring. That's going to be AR3634. That's going around the far limb very shortly. And AR3639, the one that we were always, always weary of because of just the numbering. So, as you can see, the M2.38 has not been recorded anywhere here. The last one they have is the 715 M1. They've only covered two of the five M flares here. We started the day with the M1.7, generated by AR3639, a very ugly sunspot group that you will soon see. It does appear to be reverse polarity in the northern hemisphere. So, non-up-to-date, we have the M1 down here, same sunspot, AR group, 3639. You can see that 3634 has also contributed quite a few times. There is 3643. We'll keep that in mind as well. Not a very big flare, but let's keep it in mind. I'll real quickly show you what we have here. Remember, the biggest flare of the day, the M2.38. The first flare, the M1.7. The second flare at 7.15, the M1. Now, all these flares are Earth-facing and have the potential to create a coronal mass ejection that would be inbound towards Earth and be geo-effective towards Earth. Starting the day, the M1.7, followed by the M1. And I'm guessing this is the big... 2.38 right here. They're calling it a 2.35 on NOAA, followed by an M1.21, followed by an M2.2 perhaps. So the last three, again, have not even been assigned a sunspot group, but we'll be able to see them on SDO in just a moment. All right. Taking a look at HMI Intensigram from SDO, we can see AR36. 3, 4 it looks fairly complex. It's been responsible for some of the smaller flares. I don't know if it's been responsible for any of the M flares. It does seem to go off when 3639 does. 3639 is much more complex now than this picture gives it credit for. This is a older picture. I'm looking for 3643. And honestly... Uh, here it is right here, I believe. It's one of the very intense sunspots coming around, as you will soon see when we get over to SDO. Over to GOES, 16 solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We can see the flare occur right here. It's going to be the M2.2 flare that just occurred. Uh, these are the two sunspots coming around. 43 is down here, and this is AR3639. Both of them look intense, and it 
appears that sunspot AR3639 is a reverse polarity sunspot in the northern hemisphere. Now, I believe that these lines are the impact that occur just after the solar flare, which means it could have expelled a CME and could be geo-effective towards Earth. Over to the LASCO chronographs, LASCO C2 on the left, LASCO C3 on the right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where the day starts. They haven't updated these in days, and you can see absolutely nothing. This is the coronal mass ejection being ejected. Uh, remember that happened at 1 UTC time, which is right here. You can't really see anything much going on. And we had another one here at 7.15. We don't see anything much going on as well. And they cut the time off. Well, they go from 10.48 to 1500. So they've just made that update. Or they've taken away 4 hours and 12 minutes of data right when we needed it. Let's see if they've done it on Lasco C3.2. You can see 0, 0.00. We don't see a thing happen at one o'clock as we move on this is the seven o'clock flare we don't see a thing happen for the seven o'clock flare goes on to from this one stops at 10 42 and they take away it looks like about three hours and 50 minutes three hours and 48 minutes from this one and that removal is followed by another removal from 1442 to 1506 so uh, at least one picture has been removed from that as well they're hiding all the information, making sure that no one can tell if a coronal mass ejection was admitted from any of the five M-class solar flares that have occurred early today. I want you all to take a look at what we're dealing with here. This is AR3634 that we talked about. It's going to be an old picture. When you all see the updated picture, well, you all got to understand what we're dealing with here. This is AR3639 here. And AR3 3643 is actually here, but it has been named already. Let's get some updated information. Before that, we get to watch the last part of the third M flare. Then we get to watch the, well, second strongest M flare, or the strongest M flare of the day, the 2.38. And then as we move on, we're running a very strong C flare baseline, meaning everyone's getting their dose of radiation for sure. And then we have that last M2.2 that occurs right over the Atlantic Ocean, parts of South America and the western tip of Africa, along with the Lesser Antilles or the outskirts of the Caribbean itself. And from there, we just continue with our C-class solar flare baseline. All right, over to STO HMI magnetogram image where we can see exactly what's going on here. This was actually uh, updated at 8 this morning. They've re-updated it at 9.30. You can see how intense sunspot group AR3639 is. We also see that the negative, the black, is over the positive, the white in the northern hemisphere which means it's one of these quote-unquote rare sunspot groups. They're not so rare, are they? We see one almost every day come around the limb. They're supposed to be four one-thousandths of one percent of sunspots. That's not working out. Then jumping over to AR3634, uh, well, it's a complex sunspot, but we see the positive polarity over the negative, as we should in the northern hemisphere. And this mess down here is AR3643, which is starting to get into the picture here. And we've already seen one or two flares that have been attributed to that sunspot group. All these will be Earth-facing for about the next 11 to 12 days as they transfer the Earth-facing side of our solar disk. 
they have not updated Soho at 284 angstroms yet for two days now. Obviously, they don't want you to see how bad these sunspots coming around the limb are. This was taken at 8 p.m. last night. It was the latest and greatest I could get. And you can already see that 3639 looks like it's very complex and active. And so does 3643 back here that's already been named now. Good times, I can see, are ahead of us. With all that said, we only had a 45% chance of even having an M-Class solar flare today. And thus far, we've had five M-Class solar flares. We could expect another M-Class solar flare based on those two sunspots coming around the limb that look horrific. AR3639 and AR3643. We're going to be dealing with both those sunspots for the next 11 or 12 days. Uh, if anything additional happens today, I will be back on. We're talking about a larger inflow or maybe even an X flare. God bless. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember anything's possible in bizarro world.